Welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Anwar Yusef Dunbar, and this is Big Discussions 76, Entertainment and Media. First of all, please like this video, please share it, and please subscribe to my channel. Well, I'm back with another video, and this one takes us back into the realm of uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe and, uh, and Disney and uh, that whole space. And I found two interesting articles. I'm sorry, let me correct myself. Two interesting articles were sent to me. Um, and they both involve uh, Kang the Conqueror, who is um, speculated to be the next big villain in the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, you know, obviously the first one was Thanos, and so there's talk that Kang the Conqueror is going to be uh, the next one, and so I, I was sent, sent an article um, discussing who's gonna play Kang the Conqueror, and then, uh, you know, speculating on where Kang the Conqueror uh, will come from. And so again, this is gonna be a bit of a two for one. I found two articles, they're both short. So I'm, I'm gonna capture these in one offering here. The first article uh, is entitled, Lovecraft Country Star Jonathan Majors just joined the MCU as the next big bad. Uh, and this was written by Robert Yanis Jr on uh, September 16th, 2020, and this is on Showbiz Cheat Sheet. Or it's from Showbiz Cheat Sheet, whichever you prefer. So it reads, Avengers Endgame left a uh, gaping Thanos-sized hole in the upcoming Marvel Studios slate, with Phase 4 set to kick off at some point with Black Widow Fans have been waiting to see which character will become the next big bad of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now, that question has perhaps been answered with a breakout uh, star of HBO's Love, Lovecraft Country. Uh, so, this subtitle reads, Jonathan Majors stars on HBO hit Lovecraft Country. Based on the 2016 novel by Matt Ruff, uh, Lovecraft Country, follows a young black man's quest to find his father in the 1950s. In addition to segregation and prejudice, however, Atticus Freeman, played by Jonathan Majors, encounters dark secrets with a deep connection to the writings of horror writer H.P. Lovecraft. Even though the show only debuted in August 2020, it has already become a significant hit for HBO, and leading man Majors has earned a ton of critical praise for his performance on the show. But Lovecraft Country might not have been what got the attention of the MCU. After all, Majors previously starred in the beloved 2019 indie the Last Black Man in San Francisco. So this subtitle reads, now the actor will make his MCU, his MCU debut as a major villain. Now, according to Deadline, Majors will make his MCU debut with a major role in Ant-Man 3, uh, which stars Paul Rudd, Evangeline Lilly, and Michael Douglas, um, who are all set to return under director Peyton Reed. And while uh, Marvel Studios has not confirmed who Majors is playing, Deadline reports he will play none other than uh, the MCU's version of Kang the Conqueror. By the way, I'm a, a fan of Evangeline Lilly. I love, I love me some Evangeline Lilly. Uh, I, I really enjoyed her as uh, Toriel and the, the Hobbit series and uh, I'm just a fan of her I think she's a very beautiful woman in the comics 
getting back to the, ar to the article here. <laughs> in the comics, Kang is a time-traveling entity who frequently comes up against the Avengers. He also has connections to the Fantastic Four and Doctor Doom. So if Majors is indeed playing Kang in the MCU, he could be the villain, he could be the main villain in the next Avengers movie, as well as a lead in to the Fantastic Four. Right now, it's unclear how he will factor into Ant-Man 3. So the subtitle reads, when will audiences see Kang the Conqueror in Ant-Man 3? Marvel has done wild things with its villains in the past. Uh, see Iron Man 3's uh, Mandarin reveal. But Majors feels like a strong fit for an ongoing MCU role like Kang. Moreover, the character builds on the time travel shenanigans of Avengers Endgame, seeing how uh, the quantum realm made the time heist possible. Ant-Man 3 is a smooth, uh, if unexpected, introductory film. However, fans still don't um, know when exactly Rudd and company will reunite on screen. Rumors and speculation hint at a 2022 release date for Ant-Man 3. Uh, if true, this would um, put the movie either at the tail end of Phase 4 or as the launch pad for Phase 5. Notably, 2015's Ant-Man ended Phase 2. So perhaps the MCU will similarly squeeze this third film into phase four. Stay tuned. Yeah, I hope um, they continue with the whole uh, time travel piece and the, you know, going to different dimensions. I was hoping in Spider-Man uh, Far From Home, uh, there were rumors before the movie that uh, Mysterio came from an alternate Earth and I was really, uh, which, you know, travel between this alternate Earth and the real and the Spider-Man's Earth, it, it was thought to have been made possible by the second uh, Thanos snap by the Hulk. But as we found out, the way they wrote that up, uh, Mysterio was just using uh, holographic technology, and he was just basically a fraud. So there was no interdimensional travel. I was disappointed about that. So, okay, so it looks like this is speculation that uh, Jonathan Majors is going to be uh, Kang the Conqueror. A lot, of, a lot of these articles speculate, uh, but don't necessarily know for sure. Okay, so the second article actually discusses how Kang the Conqueror might be introduced um, based upon what we saw in Ant-Man 2 um, when he went into the quantum realm. So, um, this is entitled MCU Theory, How Ant-Man 2 Set Up Kang the Conqueror. Uh, this was published three days ago by Thomas Bacon on Screen Rant. So this reads, Ant-Man 3 will introduce Kang the Conqueror, but did Ant-Man and the Wasp set up the new villain's MCU introduction with a quantum realm city? Jonathan Majors has reportedly been cast as Kang the Conqueror in Ant-Man 3, and his appearance could have been set up in Ant-Man and the Wasp. The coronavirus pandemic may have largely brought Hollywood to a halt, but Ant-Man 3 director Peyton Reed has been working on the script through the pandemic. Given that's the case, it's no surprise there has been a burst of news on the Three cool. Marvel has reportedly cast Lovecraft, Lovecraft Country uh, star Jonathan Majors. Um, okay, let me reread this. This reads kind of weird. Marvel has reported Marvel has reportedly cast Lovecraft Country star Jonathan Majors um, as Kang the Conqueror, a classic Marvel villain who's long been rumored to appear in the MCU. Uh, Kang is a massive figure in the comics, the self-styled 
Lord of Time, who seeks to conquer all that is, was, and ever will be. It's reasonable to assume Marvel Studios will streamline his origin story, which is frankly be bewildering in its complexity. So, uh, let's see. So this... Okay, so this is related. Related. I'm going to read this too. Who is Kang the Conqueror? The MCU's new time-traveling villain explained. In fact, Kang's appearance may have already been foreshadowed in Ant-Man and the Wasp with uh, the subtle introduction of a mysterious city in the quantum realm. So, you know, the way they, they shot and crafted uh, those Marvel movies was brilliant. There were so many little little things that you could have missed. Um, you, you know, in some of those movies, you had to watch them multiple times. I only saw Ant-Man and the Wasp. I saw, it, I saw it at the theater, but I didn't look for every little, um, you know, nook and cranny, as they say, because I was just hoping for a nice setup to uh, Avengers Endgame. Uh, but if, but apparently there was a scene, and it's shown in this article, which I'm going to leave in the description box below, that there was a little, a little city, basically in a little sphere, and uh, it was rumored, leading up to, or it was speculated leading up to Avengers Endgame that uh, that little city would have some sort of impact on the outcome of Avengers Endgame, uh, which it didn't, but that may be a um again that might have been a setup for something that's to come so in this subtitle in fact reads ant-man and the wasp introduced the city in the quantum realm ant-man and the wasp saw its titular heroes explore the quantum realm a plane of existence where the laws of space and time do not operate in the same way it's easy to miss but there is one scene in Ant-Man and the Wasp that reveals the quantum realm is inhabited because in the background you can see a mysterious city shielded by a dome. That's what I was just talking about. It's only on the screen for a split second, almost concealed in the psychedelic effects of the quantum realm and unnoticed even by Hank Pym. His wife, uh, Janet Van Dyne, however, would presumably have known all about the city and its inhabitants given she lived in the quantum realm for decades. The quantum realm was key to Avengers Endgame with um, Earth's mightiest heroes using it to travel in time, so for the time heist. For all uh, that's the case though, it has actually been relatively unexplored. There have long been reports that Marvel intends to make the quantum realm the focus of Ant-Man 3. As far back as 2018, producer Steven Broussard was openly admitting to uh, behind the scenes discussions between the crew. We talk a lot about the quantum realm and there would be perhaps more opportunity to go down there, he revealed. Maybe there's more down there than we, we realized. Clearly, Janet's been up to something and has different clothes on and some weapons. Where did those come from? And similarly, if you look at the right moment and freeze the DVD in, in a certain place, maybe you'll see something else as well that could tip a hat to where the story could go. The last comment was clearly a reference to the Quantum Realm City, but what could that city be? Comic book readers have uh, poured through their books looking for anything that matches the city uh, seen in the Quantum Realm. Surprisingly, there appears to be only one match for it, Chronopolis. In the comics, Chronopolis sits outside of time in a realm called Limbo, a unique dimension that exists outside the time stream uh, and that uh, any time traveler briefly passes through. Time does not exist 
at all in limbo, but rather reality is comprised of a single, ever-changing moment in which everything that ever was, is, and could be exists, or could be coexists. There are differences between limbo and the quantum realm. Time uh, does exist in the quantum realm, as indicated by Janet Van Dyne's aging, even if it is rather complicated. But the quantum realm does appear to be uh, the MCU analog. I'm sorry. So I'm gonna stop. Uh, I'm gonna stop here. There are a number uh, of articles below what I just read. Uh, I'm going to leave the link in the description box below. Uh, if the MCU actually goes ahead and incorporates all of, all of this in, it'll be very, very fascinating. Time travel, um, you know, and time and relativity. As a scientist myself, that's something that fascinates me. And it was always one of the more fun parts of Star Trek. Uh, and it's, you know, it was a fun twist to put into uh, the Avengers storyline. Over on my science and technology channel, I did an interview with someone from aerospace, Raphael uh, Perino, and we were tossing the ball back and forth about different aspects of astronomy and astrophysics. And one of the things I told him that fascinated me most about space travel uh, was the concept of time dilation. And that is uh, the the phenomenon where when you're in a low or no gravity environment that you age more slowly than when you're on a, a gravity uh, in an, an environment with gravity. So there's something about gravity that causes time to move faster and causes us to age uh, more rapidly than when we're in non-gravity environments. But that's a different topic for a different day and for a different channel. So I'm gonna stop this here. Uh, so let me know what you think in the comment section below. Please like this video, please share it, and please subscribe to my channel. And as always, remember that your attitude determines your altitude. Take care, and I'll talk to you the next time. Bye-bye.